Good evening and welcome to the Manila Times TV's newest show, Congress Diaries. This is where we analyze, scrutinize, and explore the pros and cons of some of the more interesting and controversial bills in our Congress. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokim. Tonight, we take a look at an issue which affects thousands of commuters, the daily traffic jams, it's everybody's problem, and two bills proposing to allow motorcycles to operate as public utility vehicles. Let us start with the everyday traffic. Many of us have experienced being late for our work or appointments. Who hasn't? Day after day, year after year, this is the problem we are facing. Commuting became even more difficult, if not impossible, when the LRT2 broke down. Congress has set aside for now a bill proposing to give President Duterte powers or emergency powers to address this transport problem. So the question now is, is there a solution in sight? to our transport woes. And uh, tonight, we have uh, on the hot seat, one-on-one uh, -on -one for this first half of our episode, uh, Mr. Edison Bong Nebriha, the Traffic Operations Chief of MMDA. You usually see him in EDSA. He's trying to untangle the chaos in one of Metro Manila's main roads. So, magandang gabi po. Nasa hot seat kayo ngayon, Ginoong Nebriha. Good evening, Ma'am Kim, and good evening to all your viewers. Okay, so, katulad ng pinag-uusapan natin, EDSA, kamusta na po ang EDSA ngayon? Every single day, parang lumalala ng lumalala, and uh, there is no end uh, to our problem in EDSA. Meron po bang solusyon? Ano na po ba ang, ano, ang uh, nangyayari? Well, if there's a solution, there is. Uh, but how long are we going to bear this traffic? That is something that we need to find out yeah. still, ano? Uh, the the problem on EDSA is really volume. There's yes. so much volume on EDSA. Mm -hmm. And the way EDSA as it is uh, built, uh, we cannot expand it anymore. Yes. So we're working on a five-lane road, five-lane highway, 23.8 mm -hmm. kilometers long. And that's it. Uh, uh, when it, you say uh, you're working on that, this is in the proposal stages, correct? Well, we're working in a sense that we are trying to manage a problem in that road that we cannot expand anymore. Right. But the volume of vehicles are continuously rising. I see. So, the, uh, there's really no concrete policy right now to mm -hmm. address volume reduction. Yes. So, the thing is, uh, we came up with so many proposals before, mm -hmm. like uh, high occupancy vehicle policy, that would address this. I mean, uh, partially, uh, it, yes, partially encouraging address. people to carpool uh -oh. instead of bringing their own cars individually. Uh -oh. Why not carpool in groups so that, uh, you know, if you are five in uh, Barcada, mm -hmm. one will bring his car, everybody carpools, mm -hmm. then you are ditching four cars away Correct. from the road. So that's what we wanted to uh, have uh, to come up with this sort of a carpooling policy. But did not, this did not push through. Because uh, during the initial implementation or the dry run, we were held back by a Senate resolution to mm -hmm. stop the implementation. So we did. Then we also came up with the provincial bus ban. Mm -hmm. uh, this, in this case, we are trying to decongest EDSA from the, in, from the provincial buses, mm -hmm. uh, bringing them out of Metro Manila, f shuttling the, uh, uh, the passengers, the commuters, from outskirts mm -hmm. going to the city itself. Yes. Oh. So minimizing yes. the number of uh, buses on the but road. But I think that one had uh, some measure of success, kahit papano. Almost. We almost, oh. well, we, 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 uh, uh, well, we had a massive public information campaign on this. We, we presented it to Congress. We were debated on this. Uh, but unfortunately, at the end, it did, it did not push through. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we were held back this time by a preliminary injunction by the courts. Ah, so hindi na naman umubra yun, yes, so wala na that's, naman. that's right, ma'am. So that's yeah. why uh, it's like uh, we are fighting a fight with our hands tied behind our backs. Because really, there's nothing new that we could uh, uh, implement and uh, work on to manage this traffic as so that's why when I'm asked, oh, as a traffic chief, oh, Ed, so how are you managing uh, traffic? I'm, I'm managing it with all the policies that I have on hand, and that's mm -hmm. it. 
So if it's still working, if, if these policies are still responsive, or uh, is it still, uh, what do you call this, useful for now, mm -hmm. I, 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 it's not in my position to assess that anymore because that's what I have right now and I will just implement it. Right. Actually, um, there are some who are saying na number one, we have too much private cars on the road. True. On the other hand, there's uh, the, other, um, the other opinion that if these people can, can find, uh, you know, does have an effective mass transport That's system, right. bakit ako bibili ng kotse, Tama di ba? So, hindi na dapat ako maglalabas ng pera, bibili ng kotse ko, kung meron akong alternatibo masasakyan. I agree. I totally agree that the mass public transport system is the key uh, to this problem of ours. So let's let's take for example the MRT. Yes. When MRT started, we have a ridership of five hundred thousand. So we have what twenty two trains running at the time. Yes. So instead of progressing, of adding more trains mm -hmm. to the twenty two with the five hundred ridership. We are down this morning. I think there are only 11 trains running. Wow. And the ridership is what? 200,000? Yes, yeah, so to almost so, 300,000 yeah, depending on the... On the number of trains. At, and also the time of day. Yes. yes. So now, uh, as you could see, 500,000 before we were catering to, to the commuters mm -hmm. on EDSA. And now it's down to 200 or 300,000. Yes. These people that used to ride MRT are now on the road mm -hmm. waiting for the buses. And how the, the inconvenience of waiting for the buses itself is challenging enough to many commuters. Mm -hmm. And many of these uh, commuters are also, you know, uh, could pay uh, their amortization for a car. Mm -hmm. So many of them opted to buy cars. So that's why with this, we, we uh, had an increase of volume on the road. Yes. Not only private cars, but also TNBS. Yes. Because the demand was there. Yes. Many commuters are already stranded on the road mm -hmm. because we do not have enough bus or train or buses or any other public transport. Yes. Yeah. Then the TNBS came in. Yes. So, you know, TNBS, even though that they have sharing programs and all that, but many of these TNBS are only what? Catering to one passenger at a time. And most of them are also on EDSA. So, uh, I mean, if we could start with MRT, for example, what, what the government's doing right now mm -hmm. of coming up with new trains. So if that will be, will be finished during the president's time. But, but uh, Sir Bong, uh, with all due respect, ang tagal na natin problema yung MRT na yan eh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, eh. Dati, ilan bang trains, ganito, yes. and then they said yes. they're gonna put it back. This has been the problem of the previous administration, ma'am. That's right. Tapos, kaya sila bumagsak, actually, this is one of the biggest reasons, eh, yung criticism, EDSA and the MRT. True. Ngayon, nung napalitan ng bagong administrasyon, and now we're halfway through, we still have the same problem anyway, so... Because we have the same problem, so actually, ma'am, totoo po yun, uh, yung MRT kasi natin, ano, uh, how, how many trains are really running? That's true. A maximum of 13, right? Mm. So we should be running 20 to tw 20 at least, ano, to reserve 20 at least to, to run it. However, that's, that's a problem that we're having. Well, uh, L LRT2 is bogged down right exactly. now. Exactly. MRT3 it, it broke do, down also. do not have enough trains. And I know that your hands are tied because hindi nyo naman purview yung MRT at hindi, LRT hindi, Yes, ma'am. Oh. Actually, we are augmenting via the bus augmentation program to MRT3. Oh, ito naman ang question hmm. ng iba, um, Bong. Uh, they said, ang laking problema ng mga pasaway ng mga bus drivers also. Because pag lumiko yan, nakat mo na yung ano, maglilipat sila ng dalawang True. lanes na gano'n. So dalawang lanes ka agad, yung nakat mo sa EDSA, an already congested traffic in EDSA. Tapos you have buses that zigzag left and right. Diba? Ito po bang mga buses na to, hindi, hindi na po ba natin madidisiplina ito? Especially along the main artery, which is EDSA, because that's what everybody's talking about. We've been very strict in the implementation of bus regulations. Yes. Uh, loading and unloading, closed door policy, uh, yellow lane violations. Uh, 
we, we've been very strict on that. And uh, our apprehension will show that. Mm -hmm. not, not only physical apprehension, but even non-contact. Yes. Uh, yes, discipline is really a problem on the road. That's and true. Uh, particularly to bus drivers. Okay. And uh, it's really sad that one time when we check our database, there's even one who was apprehended 533 times over a span of three years. I mean, if you're driving with 533 violations in a span of three years, there's something <laughs> wrong with you. Yes. So oh. you should not be on the road because that yes. shows your irresponsibility or being irresponsible as a driver. Right. And, uh, Di ba pwedeng cancellation, permanent cancellation ng lisensya? That's what we're doing right now, ma'am. We are recommending to LTO these uh, erring drivers with so, man, so many violations so that the LTO could suspend or revoke mm -hmm. the licenses of the, these people because it's not only about traffic per se, but this is a, an accident waiting to happen. We are just waiting for the time that this driver kills himself or kill somebody else. That's true. And we don't want that. Diba? We Wag do na not want that. Yun. One life is too much on the road to be killed, yes. That's true. Eh ngayon, uh, there's another one. Yung uh, proposed bill na yung Traffic and Congestion Crisis Act. Eh hindi na siya priority measure ngayon. Kasi hinain sa Kongreso yan. Now it's no longer a priority measure. Which means wala nang pag-asa itong pumasa. So... Given this, and wala na rin yung mga hinihingi na emergency powers, what can we still do? Uh, I mean, because, sad to say, mm. I mean, ang hirap ng kalagayan nyo ngayon, Bong, because you are uh, in the hot seat, you are the main man, lahat ng sisi mapupunta sa'yo. Uh, we've been receiving a lot of that, ma'am, in the past few years. Uh, we got used to it. However, that emergency powers, it's not MMDA who asked for it anyway. It's the DOTR. Uh, the yes. Correct. So we're, the we're part of the transport and traffic management team of the government. So uh, we will be part of the team if uh, that emergency power has been granted. However, MMDA on its part has been doing its job with or without the emergency powers. We are working on a limited authority actually. But you could, as you could see, uh, we've, been, uh, we've been very visible. MMDS That's is right. very visible. I must agree. Yes. yes. So, uh, in public information about the traffic situation, I, for one, do not sugarcoat our traffic situation. When somebody asks me how's tra how's you traffic, you tell them how it is. Yes. Yeah. And some uh, um, media personality one time told me, Oh, Sir Bong, EDSA is uh, traffic right now. I disagree. I told her, Why? Do you think it's not traffic? No. Uh, I agree because it's very traffic. <laughs> no. So, I, I do not sugarcoat it. The problem that we have is very serious. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that this problem has brought us, uh, that brought us to, is the fact that we, it opened our eyes. That this is a real problem, not only for some, but for everybody. It has affected everybody's lives. Not only as adults, but even yes. the children. Lahat. In going yes, to school, in c going yes. home after school. Right. You know, they, we have lost the quality of life that we need uh, as a family or as an individual. And uh, it, it's sad. So the thing is, now, now it has opened everybody's eyes from the top to the bottom. Yes. That this is a serious problem. That's true. But uh, we've already known that this is a serious problem. And yes. Years ago, actually, yes. we have came out with the plan so that we will not be having this problem oh. this time. Uh, at this time. So we, we tried to mitigate the increase, the, the price of urbanization mm -hmm. by coming up with a plan to mitigate its effect. Uh, population, urban migration, uh, increase in volume of vehicles, mm -hmm. all of this are brought about by our progress. Right. But then again, the progress has overtaken us That's true. to the fact that now we're struggling with traffic, with our quality of life, basically. You know, uh, there are some who are suggesting that why don't we look at uh, outside of our country for best practices, for example, in managing the traffic. And uh, let's say, katulad uh, ang bansang Thailand, they have such a huge problem yes. in traffic also. So yes. um, have we looked at um, outside also for solutions, perhaps, or uh, proposals even to uh, help solve uh, this uh, I, I think we have so many technocrats here in the Philippines that have looked, at this, that, that have looked at this problem. Uh, we even have the cooperation with Japan 
to yes. address all these problems, uh, traffic and transport. I mean, I think we have all the tools and the resources to do this. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, why? Where did it stall to come up with the, we, to implement all these plans that we have to address this problem? Yes. So basically, the, the Duterte administration, uh, lagi ko sinasabi, last touch na lang kami. Mm -hmm. Kasi yung mga problema, decades ago, were not addressed. So now, all these problems have piled up. Now, addressing it, that people are, so, are, uh, are still expecting like a magic pill that this will be solved overnight. It right. will not happen. Uh, for example, we have the Skyway 3. Oh. We're still waiting for its completion by 2020, right? Oh. Uh, we're coming up with the extension of LRT1, which also has been delayed in mm -hmm. previous administration. LRT2, we're extending it up to Antipolo. Uh, MRT7 is about, and now we're, we're coming up with the MRT7 together with the central terminal connecting mm -hmm. all these trains. So, uh, this will not happen overnight, nor not in a week, right? Mm -hmm. So, we need to wait for years uh, so that we could benefit from all this. But I don't think we have the benefit of uh, we waiting for years. We do not have the luxury of time. Yeah. That's true. Oh, we don't. And, we don't have it, especially because uh, they're saying, lalo na our economy, uh, mga ekonomista natin, ano? They're saying, magkano bang nawawala because of the traffic, diba? So economically, ang laki ng impact niya talaga sa ating yes. GDP, GNP. Yes. So we need to do something about it now, diba? So, yun ang, yun ang question ng mga iba. Pati yung si Senator Francis Tolentino, who was uh, once with MMDA, yes, yes. also proposed alternative work arrangements. Tapos, meron ding mga flexible work hours. In other words, lahat na nagpipitch in, but I don't know. Parang hindi yata umuubra, di ba? And it just seems to get worse and worse. So, uh, in your mind, uh, sir, that... Uh, Medyo matagal na rin kayo sa trabaho ninyo. Yes. Ano sa palagay ninyo, from all the measures that you have uh, implemented, which one do you think should be sustained? Which one should uh, be abolished or scrapped? And which ones do you think, uh, where do we look at in the future for more solutions on this? Well, Concrete solutions. Well, I believe that mass public transport system is the key. Tama. So we need to take all these people out of their cars and take buses, trains, or even active transport like bicycles and or or merely walking, right? Uh, that's one thing. Now we're, we're we're coming up with so many programs as far as mass public transport system is concerned, and we're coming up also with the uh, elevated walkway for active transport, naman. And Kung, the, what is the well the program for the that? Like, elevated walkway will connect all the three CBDs, the uh, central business districts. On EDSA, which is Cubao, uh, which is Areneta City, Ortigas uh, Center, and Makati. Makati yes. So this will be connected. Uh, maybe what six, seven kilometers uh, walkway that will connect all the three centers. And I mean, what that is the is status bad. of that? Uh, are we? Well, it's already funded, so uh, I just do not know. The implementing agency for that would be DOTR. That's true. So uh, well, one good news is that we have already the funding for that. Well, so. Yeah, the, actually, with this administration, it seems that the funding uh, or uh, even the offer to fund for, from even the private sector has always been there. It's just that hindi tayo makapag-umpisa. Yes, ma'am. Actually, this, this administration has been very aggressive in, in its uh, uh, infrastructure programs. You know? Not only on the roads, uh, even the airports. Uh, we've also uh, improving our... Uh, nautical highway so to speak with the roros okay. so all the all the aspects of transportations are there and uh are be and are being addressed right now oh no i i tend to disagree with you on that i'm so sorry but wala na tayo kasing oras uh, for yes. that eh. so <laughs> dapat another topic naman yan, alternative uh means of uh, Trans public transportation yes. so ngayon last question because magpapasko na christmas season again now Impossible na yung traffic eh. So what can we expect this uh, Christmas season? Ano po ba yung, apart from the Christmas lanes that uh, you are putting up there, paano po kaya ang expect natin uh, to at least help alleviate a little bit 
of uh, the traffic situation that we are expecting? Actually, ma'am, every every bare month, you know, we expect uh, the least 10%. To 20% of uh, influx of vehicles in uh, Metro Manila, yes. particularly on EDSA. Yes. So to address this, we came up with adjusted mall hours because this influx actually, uh, Waze has already came out with a study on this, that most of this 10% uh, to 20% goes to malls and uh, grocery stores. Sure. Especially during the peak of the Christmas rush, which is, which is one week before Christmas. Yes. So to do that, uh, to address that, we we adjusted the mall hours to 11. Mm -hmm. So to mitigate the effect of this influx, because if this, if this 15, 15 to 20% will uh, go together with the morning rush hours that we have for those people who are going to work and going to school, mm -hmm. then we have even more bigger problems. So that's why uh, we adjusted the mall hours so that these people uh, the 15 to 20% additional vehicles will be moved to a later uh, time in the morning. So, and so in, in the hope that... Uh, in the hope yes. that somehow we will spread out the rush hours mm -hmm. on EDSA. Actually, right now, uh, I, we do not have a particular rush hour anymore on EDSA. Wala na, every, every hour, every minute. Every it's minute, like, is, yes, it's always rush hour in EDSA. It's always full. Yes. Oh, nice. So, you think, hindi ka ba nagsisisi na thankless no, job? No, no. This is a thankless job. This is a very challenging job. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I have not lost, lost hope in this, in this fight. So, the thing is, we, we, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. What I always I say... I hope so because we don't yeah. see it yet at this time. Maybe next time you no, can no. tell me how you are We see the light it. at the end of the tunnel but the tunnel is still long. So. Okay, so, and the tunnel is yet to be built, actually. Yeah. Okay, so uh, until the next time that yes, we see you, yes, thank you very much thank for uh, being uh, with us here thank you, uh, and taking the hot seat for yes, us. So we would like to thank our guest, Mr. Bong Nebriha, the Traffic Operations Chief of MMDA or the beleaguered Traffic Operations Chief of <laughs> MMDA. Congress Diaries will be back after the break. Do stay with us. Good evening, we're back on Congress Diaries. Now for our uh, second half of uh, tonight's episode, we are going to talk about the motorcycles and possibly, possibly, its new role as a legal public transportation vehicle. I am sure that our commuting public is familiar with the Habal Habal and now we have, you know, what we see on the streets, the Angkas uh, motorcycles and the ones with the... Uh, yeah, with, with the Hacha, you can see it actually. And they say if you can't get a ride on a jeepney or a bus, you're running late, motorcycles for hire is the chosen alternative. For now, though, motorcycles as PUVs are illegal. And uh, they are stuck that it may change. There are two bills in Congress <coughs> now proposing that motorcycles be allowed to operate as PUVs. And so, let us discuss these bills with two of our guests, the stakeholders uh, actually um, in this issue. Um, first, uh, to my uh, left here is Mr. Jobert Bolanos, the chairman of Motorcycle Rights Organization, and Mr. Efren De Luna, uh, the national president of the Alliance of Concerned Transport Organization, or ACTO. 
So, magandang gabi po sa inyo. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, gentlemen. Maraming salamat sa pagdating nyo dito sa aming uh, programa. Salamat, Kim. Salamat, salamat, Kim. Okay, so simulan muna natin uh, kay Mr. Bolanos. Kasi mukhang usong-uso ngayon ng motorcycle, ano? Nasa kalsada, kaliwat, kanan, di ba? At saka yung angkas nga. And, you know, ang tagal na sa atin yan, habal-habal eh. Merong six-month test run yes. for the motorcycle uh, taxi. that I think that's what they call motorcycle taxi. In Metro Manila and in Cebu, Cebu. and uh, this one obviously with the blessings of the DOTR. Mm. So, ang nais ng mga transport officials ay, you know, ipagpatuloy kung ligtas yes. uh, ang mga motorcycle taxis so mm. ang, at economically viable. Palagay ko, economically viable kasi ang dami sumasakay. Yes. So, the question is, kumusta ang test run ngayon? Ano ba yung mga naranasan na problema? Uh, sa paggamit ng motorsiklo and uh, ano yung naging public reaction or acceptance in general? So, Mr. Bolanos. Well, uh, as far as uh, the status pagdating sa threshold on accidents, kasi safety ang pinag-uusapan. So, Correct. ang unang-unang uh, metric natin dito is the number of accidents na masasangkot ang isang uh, motorcycle taxi provider. Mm -hmm. So far, they are uh, well within that threshold. Hindi ho sila even lumapit doon sa limit na sinet ng government, which is 5%, malayong malayo ho doon. Which goes to prove na yung sinasabi ho ng motorcycle taxi natin, if we just follow the parameters, they become safe. Uh, with a little bit of training, uh, making sure that they are properly screened, uh, nababawasan natin yung incidents kasi... Uh, alam nila yung responsibility of handling a passenger. And it's not about them, it's about transporting people. Mm -hmm. So, safety talaga is number one. Yes. Uh, if we do a comparison, uh, the motorcycle taxi, as of today, has the least amount of fatalities. In fact, wala pa ho natatalang fatality since the start of the six-month period. The test run, There are yes. some accidents, uh, some heavy, some light, uh, but it has never come to a point that there has been a fatality recorded. dead. Uh, yung nakikita ho natin sa news mostly are non-motorcycle taxi operators. Uh, and then as far as uh, the pilot is concerned, nasa stretch na, last stretch na tayo ng pilot eh. Kailan After, mo ba matatapos yun? Well, uh, they granted it in June. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they started in July. So, we're not sure if we're going to follow the June or the July, but in December, we're expecting that the TWG or the Technical Working Group uh, will reconvene to do a final assessment. I see. And then after the final assessment, we will make a recommendation to the government for the two bills in Senate and in the lower house mm -hmm. kung matutuloy na nga ba ang motorcycle taxi bill. What's very important about this one is we're setting a standard and the regulations that support that standard to ensure safety kasi yan ang primordial concern. That's right. And then, uh, ang dream dito, ang general dream dito is once we set the standard for the motorcycle taxi, it goes down and cascades to the other public transport sectors na lahat sila magkakaroon na ng standard of safety, magkakaroon na ng training ang bawat driver, magkakaroon na sila ng sinusunod na parameters para na may maintain natin yung level of discipline at nababawasan ng mga fatalities. Actually, yun na nga, you jumped the gun on me. Yan ang next ko na tanong eh. Meron bang formal training na pinapanukala dito sa mga nakahain ng mga measures sa Congress ngayon uh, does that include formal training for, uh, or at least yung mga sa IRR nila, no? Mm -hmm. Alituntuni, nasusundin mo kung ikaw ay motor, motorcycle taxi driver. At saka ganun din, meron din bang ganun na ngayon na uh, at present sa mga, sa mga jeep? Mm -hmm. So, let's start with you. So, motorcycle meron. Ho. It's meron. a requirement. They have to undergo uh, several <coughs> levels of training mm -hmm. and then they have to undergo screening to see if they are really capable of handling their motorcycle safely with a passenger. Right. So, dumadaan sila sa procedure na yan. And it's continuously being improved, by the way. I see. Uh, the standards are still being raised as we speak. Oh, ibig sabihin nun, hindi pa tayo, hindi pa tapos eh, hindi pa... Hindi pa, oh, but it is present. You're developing, you're oh, developing. It is present. It. Ah, I see. Sa ano ba, uh, ka friend sa mga drivers ng mga um, passenger jeeps, meron bang... 
ganyan din na formal training, ito yung basic na rules that you have to follow. Katulad ng ginagawa nila, meron, meron ba yung ganun din? Ah, meron. At uh, bilang katunayan niya, eh, kami nga nagpanukala yun eh. Mm-hmm. Yung tinasabi natin, yung sinatawag na Drivers Academy. Yes. Kapag ka ikaw ay uh, hindi dumaan dun sa Drivers Academy, hindi ka pwedeng magmaneho ng public utilities. Mm-hmm. Kaya isang patunay lamang yan na talagang hina- kami ay tumutulong sa ating pamahalaan para maging maayos ang ating transportasyon sa ating bansa. Oh, so mer- meron, meron talaga in place, ano, existing mm-hmm. ngayon. So, ang tanong kasi, uh, Mr. Uh, Bolanos, ng marami, yung sa motorcycle, kasi alam mo, pag binuksan mo yung TV, Makikita mo ang daming motorcycle accidents sa eh, palagi eh, di ba? Yeah. So syempre natatakot yung mga mananakay, di ba? Gusto man nila dahil ngayon wala naman choice dahil sa traffic. Mm-hmm. Ang tanong nila yung sa safety mm-hmm. uh, for that. So I know you said na ngayon as of now during the test run, maganda yung resulta dahil maganda. halos oo, dahil yes. halos wala. So uh, paano niyo ma-alleviate yung mga fears o yung nararamdaman na takot o nervyos ng mga ibang mananakay, halimbawa? Ito ho yung kinaganda ng modern technology. Because we are uh, app-based hailing system, katulad ho ng uh, TNVS, mm-hmm. there's a feedback system in place okay. na does wonders pagdating sa public transport. Kasi uh, internally, uh, sa mga kumpanyang pasok sa motorcycle taxi, the feedback system is what makes them do the check and balance pagdating sa riders. So, if may isang pasahero felt that he was unsafe during his ride, he can immediately input feedback na makukuha ng company and the company shall act on the rider in question. And uh, as far as the information that has been shared with me by the corporation that runs under the pilot right now, eh, daan-daan din ang nasususpend at nababan nila sa kanilang application because of these violations. I see. So, they are very strict with their rules and regulations. So, that's one way of uh, ensuring that the public uh, feedback is mm-hmm. part of the safety system. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that said, nananatili ngayon na disiplinado at sumusunod sa pat- patakaran yung mga rider kasi ayaw din nilang ma- ma-check out sila eh, ng system eh. Tama. Because they will lose their livelihood. Okay, there's a question actually here na yung tungkol sa magkano ang pamasahe ng mga commuters, no? Magkakaroon ba ng tinatawag na taripa? Ang angkas, for example, kasi ang angkas ang nandyan ngayon, mm-hmm. ano? Katulad ng iba pang PUVs. Uh, that will be a question left for the government if they do. Uh, the wala co- sa billion ngayon, wala sa... Wala pa. Because it's a new system like the TNVS, but eventually, uh, I, I believe that the thing is a punto na yan. Uh, the, the companies that are coming in should always be uh, at present sumunod dun sa nakalagay sa batas. Okay, so what is in there right now? Yes. Okay, so ngayon, ito naman ang tanong ko kay uh, Mr. De Luna. Tutul po ba kayo sa mga motorcycle taxi at kung uh, oo, bakit po? At kung hindi naman, eh, ano rin yung reason ninyo? Hi everyone! I am Z Hervasho and welcome to the new Clark City where the 30th Southeast Asian Games will be held this November. Dito gaganepin ang tagisa ng mga atleta mula sa iba't ibang bansa ng Southeast Asian region.
kayo sa mga motorcycle taxi at kung uh, oo, oh, bakit po? At kung hindi naman, eh, ano rin yung reason ninyo? Number one ay uh, nakikita naman natin na uh, pare-pareho naman kami na gusto ng mabuhay sa hanay ng transportasyon. Mm. At uh, iisa lamang naman ang aming hangarin ang makapaglingkod ng, sa taong bayan. Ay uh, tingnan natin na uh, yung mga tinatawag na mga susunod pang mga pangyayari dahil sa amin naman sa mga jeepney, UV ay uh, may mga sarili naman kami tinatawag na pasahero. Mm -hmm. At uh, lumalabas naman ay uh, kung sila naman ay magiging tinatawag na magsiservisyo ng birong public service sa mga mananakay, ay uh, hindi natin tinututulan yan. Dahil uh, na kanya-kanya namang klaseng servisyo yung ipina ang aming uh, ibibigay para sa ating mga mananakay. Oo, okay. So, sa madaling salita, para sa ikabubuti ng mga mananakay din naman na lahat, ano, yes. hindi nyo tututulan yun, yung ganon. Ngayon, eto po yung tanong kasi... Yeah. Ah, uh, you know, uh, hindi naman lingid sa iba na alam ko naman yung issue nung sa kanila most uh, especially ano sa mga jeepney and on the modernization issue, di ba? Bakit sabi po nila itutul daw kayo sa modernization ng jeepney? Totoo po ba 'yon o hindi? And uh, sapat na ba yung bilang ng mga jeepney sa Metro Manila para sa pangangailangan ng mga commuters? Sa nakikita namin ay uh, yung sinasabi ng ating pamahala katulad ng DOTR at saka LT Parby mm -hmm. ay uh, palagay ko ay uh, sinungaling sila. At uh, may, mga, may mga panlilin lang. Mm -hmm. Dahil malino na malinaw na mismong ako ang isa sa signatories ng tinatawag natin na PUB modernization. Ibig sabihin, hindi kayo tutol. Oo, oh, dahil nung, nung inlinaw yan, nung kami unang nagkaroon ng tinatawag natin na na ilalaunch nila yung PUB modernization ay uh, sinabi ni Secretary Tugati sa akin alam mo ka Efren kapag kahalimbawa paano natin yan uh, sisimulan at kung paano natin makikita yung mali kung hindi naman tayo magsisimula okay. kaya nung nakita na namin yung tinataw kasi yung kasi uh, PUB modernization yung omnibus guideline is kinubo na lang sa amin yan eh mm -hmm. At uh, yung una, kaya kami naman pumayag dahil magaganda yung mga sinasabi. Okay. At talagang benefit para sa ating mga mananakay. Pero nung bandang huli na, dun sa nakita namin, may mga tinatawag natin na, na, na mga panilin lang na imposible anong, anong, para sa amin. Anong ibig niyo Yung laman ng PUB modernization. Yung uh, mga requirement. Oo, sige nga. Halimbawa uh, natin, ang unang sinasabi nila ron ay uh, magtayo kami ng cooperative o korporasyon. Okay. Tapos, ang lumalabas doon ay uh, uh, surrender ng aming prangkisa. Tapos, yun ang kapalit? Uh, uh, yun, yun ang sinasabi nila doon. Mm. Tapos, ang pong pagkaintindi namin, tutulungan kami na papalitan lang ang aming mga unit. No? Pag nagtayo kami ng kooperatiba o korporasyon. Ngayon, ang lumalabas dito sa aming pagkaintindi, nung napag-aralan na namin, ang sinabi doon ay uh, i-endorse lang lang pala kami doon sa land bank. Okay. Ano yung siguridad namin kung isang daang unit kami na papautangin kami ng land bank na wala pa kaming karanasan sa pitch management, wala kaming karanasan sa sinasabi natin na mga requirement na gusto ng land bank. Katulad dalimbawa yung imposible. Kung ang rota mo ay pasig kaya po, ang okay. kailangan daw natin ng laman doon ay may depo ka. Yung isang daang unit, kailangan doon sa Kiapo at saka sa Pasig, meron kang depong paglalagyan ng buo mm, ng unit terminal. mo. Oh. Para hindi nakakalat. Oh. Oh. Ngayon, kung ang rota may Kiapo, saan ka upa ng private plot sa Kiapo? Yeah, hindi na kami papasa. Ngayon, kung yan naman ay tinatawag natin ay isusurrender namin ang prangkisa namin lahat, ang magiging classification naman namin ay inyong aplikan. Mm -hmm. Pag nang new applicant ka, ang mangyayari ngayon doon, hindi pa pwede na kabilang yung hirigan sa rota namin. I-open natin sa lahat yan. Papasok na yung mga mayayaman na korporasyon mm -hmm. sa bidding. Ibibidding yan eh. Kaya wala kami siguridad na kami ay makakapasa doon sa bidding. Dahil doon sa depo pa lang, wala na kami. Sino ngayon ang may depo na pwedeng gumawa at pumasok sa korporasyon na pagkipag-bidding doon sa LT Palby? Hindi mga mall na mga may lalaki na mayroon na silang tinatawag na mga mga terminal Oo, sa may mga, mga built-in terminal oh, sa Silang pwedeng sila. pumasa. Oo. Kami wala na ng mga individual. Yun yung mga question pa namin sa kanila. Mm -hmm. Kaya malino na malinaw, maganda yung programa. 
sa parte ng pagbumodernize. Kailangan talaga magbago ang transportasyon sa ating bansa. Tama naman. Pero unti-unti, igradwa lamang natin. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, ang lalabas doon, may standard silang ipinalabas. Kailangan ay nakatayo, kailangan ay 24-seater, kailangan sarado ang likod, kailangan ang sakayan ay malapit doon sa driver. Parang minibus mm -hmm. is tight. Ngayon, ang lumalabas, may mga pinakikita silang mga sasakyan na mga tinatawag na hindi naman jeep, kundi wala yung muka. Yung pa, parang ban ang style. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, gawang China, etc. Tatapos, uh, inaano sa amin na yung, yung mga klase ng unit na yon ang ini-endure sa amin. Ngayon, ang halaga, 2.5 million hanggang sa 3 million. Anong kakayahan ng isang malita operator para magkaroon nun? At sino naman bangko ang magpapautang sa amin ng ganong kalaki na ang tanging pera lamang namin na pwedeng maging collateral ay yung parte lamang ng aming unit at praktisa. Mm -hmm. Kaya lumalabas, wala kaming pagkakataon na makakasama kami dun sa programa. I see. Kaya, kaya ang lumalabas dito, ang gusto pa rin ng gobyerno pala ay yung lumalabas na parang investment scheme. Mm -hmm. Na parang lalaban, magtayo ng kooperatiba, magtayo ng korporasyon, mag-share ka lang. Mag-invest ka ng halaga. Parang passive investor Oo, ka. Passive pero ka wala, ka wala ka na unit, ng... wala ka ng prangkisa, maghintay ka kung guunlad yung korporasyon o yung kooperatiba. Mm. Pa, ngayon, inalisan mo na ng karapatan dahil sinurender mo ng lahat. Kaya nga sinasabi natin, eh, hindi kami tutol doon sa standard ng, ng programa ng gobyerno na baguhin yung, yung, transport, yung uh, unit. Oo. Ngayon, mayroon naman kami na, na dapat pamiliin kami. Kung gusto mo ng investment uh, scheme na, na, na operation mo, okay. Mm -hmm. Kung gusto naman namin na boundary system na kami naman ang nabuhunan ng unit namin, i-okay mo rin. Ang ibig sabihin, ang very importante dito, sumunod ka doon sa pagmamodernize. Mm -hmm. Yung klase ng unit, etc., ay sumunod ka naman. Pero in compliance yung, oh, yung, yung, oh, sa climate change oh, yung, natin. Yung climate change, oh. Euro 5 na nga yung oh. sa amin eh. Oh. Hindi na Euro 4. Kanila, ang inaano nila, Euro, Euro 4, 4 lang. Ang akin, Euro 5 na. Kaya ang lumalabas, mababa pa ang halaga, 1.3 million. Meron ka ng ganong klaseng sasakyan. Alam, alam mo ka, Efren, meron ding mga ibang nagsasabi. Ano? Kasi medyo ito yung diferensya sa motorcycles at saka sa sa passenger jeep nisa no mukhang sa kanila maayos yung nagiging start ng sistema nila on the consultation lahat yung mga stakeholders nagka nagkakaroon ng mm. voice dito mm -hmm. para maayos yung magiging uh, mm. resulting na guidelines yes. 'di ba mukhang sa ano sa mga jeepney hindi yata ganoon eh, mm. eh ang, ang balita ko eh kasi kailan lang nag-strike kayo eh, 'di ba nung mm. nung September eh, 'di ba eh oh September 30 so ang sinasabi na hindi kayo kinonsulta Kumbaga, walang public consultation oh. doon sa kanilang uh, scheme na yan. Pangalawa, ang sinasabi yata, eh, sobrang mahal, mm. hindi nyo kakayanin, at saka parang wala kayong choice oh. na dito lang kayo bibili mm. at ito yung presyo mm. nito, di ba? Actually, presyo ng ano yan, eh, mamahaling mm. SUV na yung yeah. 3 million na Actually, yan. Actually, eh. oh. oh, yun, eh, yun nga yung sinasabi natin sa DOTRLT PARB, bakit kayo ang nagmamando? Dapat tinanong muna nila. Eh, dapat naman, eh, dapat, regulating yung agency Yung pagmamando nila, sila. yung parte ng kalakaran. Pero yung tinatawag natin yung pagmamando, kung saan kami bibili, medyo hindi natin makatarungan yon Dapat doon, o oh, sumunod lamang kayo sa modernization, kailangan na yung climate change, kailangan yung security ng pasahero, etc. Maging maayos ang sakay. Eh, kung, mabi, kung, kung mapupundar naman namin ng individual yun eh, bakit mo pa kami pipilitin na mag-invest? Di ba, pamiliin mo kami kung saan kami, yung kalakaran, investment ka, kung may korporasyon kayong kakilala, or tumato, okay yun. Kung kami naman ay kaya naman namin magpunda ng sarili namin, may sarili kami pinanser, o di yung dati pa rin kalakaran, yung tina, huwag na mag-surrender ng prangkisa for security namin. Mm -hmm. Parang nga lumabas, magiging dropping in substitution. Parang tatanggalin namin yung luma, papalitan namin ng bago, yun ang ilalagay doon sa prangkisa namin, na yun pa rin ang gagamitin namin. Basangin. At nakakasigurado kami mm -hmm. na kami pa rin ang binibigyan ng pagkakataon na, na mag, magpapatuloy ng serbisyo namin sa hanay ng transportasyon. Oo nga eh. So, nakikita natin ngayon, no? we see the differences in yes. uh, yung sa motorcycles uh, at saka yung sa passenger jeepneys. Ano? Uh, so, kayo, 
uh, walang tutul sa modernization kasi yun nga tal dapat nga mag-upbase na rin yata yung jeepney para may instant feedback eh. So, hindi kayo tutul doon. Ang tutul kayo, doon sa... Kalakaran. Eh, oo, sa klase ng kalakaran na binibigay sa inyo. Eh, balita ko, eh, dinedemanda nyo pa daw yung mga official ng mga ahensya eh. Hindi, kasi kapag mali naman, dapat ipakita naman natin yung party na tinatawag na kamalian nila. Tama. Paano nila mapapakita, mapapakita natin na baka hindi niya naiintindihan yung kanyang obligasyon bilang chairman ng mm -hmm. LTPRB. Mm -hmm. Kaya si, si chairman Delgra Del ang aking uh, dinimanda oh. dahil nakapagbukas siya ng prangkisa na meron siyang tinatawag natin na yun lamang ang kanyang kinikilala. Dapat do, pag nagbubukas ka ng prangkisa, i-open mo sa lahat. Mm -hmm. uh, hindi pa pwede yung may tinatangi ka. Kaya doon ko, dinimanda ko siya sa ombudsman doon sa anti-graphing corruption. Tama, oo. Oh. Tapos, ang, ang lumabas pa doon ay uh, may public hearing yan sa Senado at Kongreso. Mm -hmm. At sinasabi mismo ng, kung, ng Senado, huwag kayo magmadali, hindi pa kayo handa. Ang ibig sabihin, ang hindi handa, yung implementation ng PUB modernization. Hindi kayo. Hindi kami. Oh. Kaya nga lumalabas, kami handa na eh. Ang kailangan na lang namin, yung maayos na pag-uusap at may mga papel na siguridad kami. Kasi pwede, yung PUB modernization, pinasukan na ng investment is kami. Sa anong pamamaraan? Dahil may advisory na na nanggagaling sa SEC. Oh. Na ang sinasabi, yung kanilang accreditation na pinasa ngayon, na ini-implement na ngayon ng LTPRB, yung tinasabi natin na operation nila, yung tinatawag na investment. Mm -hmm. Kaya ang lumalabas ngayon dito... Eh bakit nag-warning ang SEC dyan? Ang... Dahil nga dito sa sistema ng tinatawag na korporasyon, kasi kung ikaw, kung ikaw ay korporasyon, hindi kailangan na yung negosyo mo, kukunin mo yung pag i sa tao. Mm -hmm. Di ba dapat ay kung korporasyon ka, kung paano mo nalang papatakbuhin yung korporasyon mo, nakukuha ka nalang ng tao Tama. na para mapaunlad mo. Eh kaso yung kanila kukunin nyo sa tao yung pera na i-invest, na pambili ng sasakyan, at sila lang ang mag-operasyon. Hmm. Kaya nung malabas, <laughs> yun nga yung gustong ipatupad ng LTPRB na naging kinikwestiyon ko ngayon na kung yan din ang ipapatupad mo sa amin, doon sa ano, at pagkamali kayo, nang na may pinakita na tayong kamalian na ginawa nyo, pag yan pa rin ang ipinatupad ninyo, dalawang taon at kalahati na lang kayong manunungkulan, kabuhayan namin ang nakataya. Okay, Kaya kailangan so, maging maayos yung sistema ng iyong implementasyon o pagpapatupad. Okay, so medyo masalimuot yan. Actually, ah. kailangan natin ng bagong episode dyan na ka Efren eh. Pero ito, huling-huli na lang, ano? uh, dahil wala na tayong oras. Eh, no? eh balita namin, eh, magsusunog daw kayo ng jeep. Eh. Totoo ba yun at huwag naman? Bakit naman? Uh, number one, open. maganda kasi yung programa ng ating Pangulo. Mm -hmm. Naniniwala nga kami sa pagmamodernize. Mm -hmm. Pero kung kabuhayan na namin at binigyan kami ng tinatawag natin na hangganan, mm -hmm. ang sinasabi nila, kaysa ayaw at sa gusto ninyo, pagsapit ng July 2020, kayo lahat ay wawas out namin, bahala na kayo kung saan kayo papatungo. Mm -hmm. Kaya kabuhayan namin na nakataya dito, bukas naman ang palad namin, hindi naman kami tututul sa modernization. At uh, ang sabi ko nga, ang panawagan ko ay uh, mga ilang na sana ang Office of the President. Kahit hindi na si Presidente yung kausap namin. Kundi magdagda na lamang ng kanilang ahensya kung sino ka pagharapin kami, uh, DOTR, so, DPRB, etc. Sa ngayon, wala. Hanggang walang... ngayon ay wala pa. Kaya lumalabas, pinaghahandaan din namin na kaysa naman doon sa mawalan na kami ng hanap buhay, kung wala na kami ang prangkisa, ano yung panamin yung jeep namin? Di ba baranda na lang namin sa gitna ng kalsada at pagsusunogin na lang namin <laughs> oh, para ipakita namin oh. na kabuhayan namin ang okay. inalis na na. At kami na mismo ay tumulong na rin doon sa tinatawag na pag-alis na ng kabuhayan namin. Kaya malinaw na malinaw, kung hindi babaguhin yung sistema ng PUB modernization, malinaw yan na anti-poor dahil may papatayin kayo na tinatawag na kabuhayan ng isang sektor. Okay, so kailangan dyan actually next time ang iupo natin si Chairman Delgra ng LTFRB. So, uh, on as a last uh, word, uh, on your part, uh, Jobert uh, uh, Polanos, for uh, the... Sa, sa motorcycle taxi industry, uh, there is no intention to replace any of our present uh, transport providers tulad ng grupo ho ni KFRN. Ang purpose namin is to assist the commuters to get from one point to another point or to pick them up from their houses para dalin sa mga terminal nila. Mm -hmm. Para doon na sila magpapatuloy ng kanilang commute. So, kami, itemporary lang ang pagiging solusyon ng motorcycle taxi. 
And the intention here, tulad ng aming pag-uusap kanina, What do you say temporary? Ibig sabihin nun? Uh, hindi to forever. Be, uh, because the moment the mass transport system has been fixed and is operating properly, there's no more need for the motorcycle taxi. Ah, okay. Makawala so, na ho yung yes. need dyan eh. Oh, yes. So right now, because there are problems with traffic, number one. Number two, there's problem That's with mass transport. That's probably an understatement, ha? Huh? Yes. Problems sa traffic. Yeah, and... and so, we are here as a temporary solution to help alleviate the problems. So, ang, ang role namin talaga dito is not to replace anyone, but to assist our existing transport system. So, we help one another. Mm -hmm. So, yung sa amin lang ho, eh, dapat pagtugunan ng pansin ng gobyerno, yung katulad ng ginagawa namin, na kami nagkakaisa na to help one another. The government also, the agencies should come together Yes. systematically synergize with one another mm -hmm. na magkaroon sila ng proper coordination at hindi na sila nagkakagulo at nagtuturoan mm -hmm. ng kanilang daliri. Tama. The point here being is people need transport. The needs of the people come first before anything else. Tama. And on that note, that's a very good uh, statement to end with. No? We thank you very much. Maraming salamat po sa pag- uh, uh, unlak ninyo sa aming uh, uh, ano sa inyo na magsalita, issues on traffic and on the motorcycle taxis and uh, pati sa mga passenger jeepneys. So, uh, we'd like to thank our guest, Mr. Jobert Bulanos and of course, Mr. Efren De Luna of uh, ACTO. And uh, that, that's it for our second episode of our show, Congress Diaries. You can also watch us uh, at the Manila Times TV .com or we are also in YouTube and uh, in Facebook. So we'll be back next week to take another look at the pending bills in Congress and see if there or the proposed laws uh, there deserve to become real laws. Until then, I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. I'll see you next week. Good night.